Hi everyone, thanks for uh, uh, thanks for joining. Uh, we will wait for another one minute. Uh, we will give uh, um, the opportunity to, to join, and then we can start. So again, thank you very much for joining, and we will start in exactly one minute. Thanks everyone for joining me today. My name is Avishai Ben Zaken and I'm an account executive here at Blazemeter and I'm responsible for all the sales um, from APJ. Uh, I hope that you will find this webinar valuable. Today's webinar is being recorded and of course all registrants will be sent the full recording by email over the next few days. Um, there will be time for questions at the end of the webinar and people can and actually are encouraged uh, to ask in the questions box uh, on the GoToWebinar control panel, so you can just ask your questions. Um, of course, I will try to get as many as possible, but please, you know, keep them on the topic of today's webinar, which is eventually, you know, it's a very introduction, it's introduction to JMeter and BlazeMeter, and how you can run JMeter tests uh, with BlazeMeter. Uh, note that at the end of today's webinar, there will be a very short, uh, short uh, survey uh, that you will see. Uh, please do take just uh, 30 seconds to answer it. It allow us uh, to get your feedback about the webinar and it will make our webinars even better in the future. And it also give you the opportunity, if you would like to do that, uh, to request an, uh, a one-on-one -on -one, uh, demo session uh, with the, one of our, my colleagues uh, to address your specific performance testing needs. Okay, so keep in mind that you can definitely do that. Um, and as mentioned, so today's uh, webinar, the topic of today's webinar is how you can run JMeter tests with BlazeMeter. So I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna review some of the you know, the basic uh, features that you have in JMeter. We'll show you how you can run a JMeter test in JMeter, and then I can show you how we can actually scale beyond JMeter limitations by using BlazeMeter. Um, so without further ado, let me just open my JMeter application. Perfect. So what is exactly, what is JMeter? So JMeter is an open source tool uh, for performance testing. There is actually almost nothing that you cannot test with JMeter. You can test web applications, you can test mobile applications, um, you can test uh, e-commerce websites, uh, live streaming application, and you can do all of that uh, because eventually, again, it's an open source tool. So you have the, the community, the JMeter community that con contribute to the community. Uh, so they can add plugins, for example. And I think that the biggest contributor to the open source community, for, for example, the JMeter open source community is actually BlazeMeter. So we actually contributed multiple uh, multiple uh, plugins like the HLS, for example, if you're looking to test a live streaming application, then you can test it by, by using the BlazeMeter HLS plugin for, uh, for JMeter. And you can find all the plugins in the JMeter plugin directory. And I will show you how you can do that. And know that BlazeMeter actually uh, recently launched an a JMeter Academy. Let me just show you. So in this training academy, which is 
100% free, free of charge. Okay, you can learn all the basic, uh, the geometry, the basic, uh, you know, geometer. So you can have introduction to courses to geometer, and you can have advanced uh, courses and even CI testing uh, courses, which means that eventually you can even learn how to integrate your uh, your testing, your eventually your performance testing or testing in general into your CI process. Okay, and I can, we will talk about it um, in a few minutes. So again, you can just type in, in Google, BlazeMeter JMeter Academy. It's an awesome resource that we contributed to the open source community. So you should definitely take a look at that if it's you know the first time or even it's, if you have like the basic knowledge um, in JMeter. So again, JMeter is an open source tool that helps you to test um, test applications. And eventually, you know, why do you need to use JMeter or why do you need to use BlazeMeter? So if you have an application and you want to make sure that this application can ha actually handle the load that you're expecting, you need to test it beforehand. So let's say that you're a, a website like, I don't know, Amazon, for example, and you have an event like a special event, a compelling event like Black Friday, and you know that you're expecting, let's say, 1 million users at a specific time frame. Let's say at uh, 7 a.m. on Sunday, you're expecting 1 million users to enter your website, to access your website, and making purchases or ma making reservations. Or it can be like flight tickets. It can be so many scenarios that you can just uh, think about. So how do you know that you can actually handle the load? How do you know if you can actually, if your website will be able to recover from the load? This is why you need tools like JMeter and BlazeMeter that you can actually make sure that your application can handle the load. You will be able to pinpoint when you reach the bottleneck and how you need to resolve it. So as mentioned, you can with JMeter, um, you can test um, any kind of application. Eventually, uh, it supports so many protocols, including um, HTTP, HTTPS, live streaming there are so many protocols that you can say you can actually test with, with jmeter so this is the jmeter uh, graphical user interface let me just expand the window okay and again note this is just a very basic you know, introduction uh, to jmeter you will find a lot of valuable information in the training academy that i just showed you and i will share with you the link uh, to the academy so this is JMeter. This is how JMeter looks like. As you can see, uh, I, have, I created the test, and I will show you how you can create the test with BlazeMeter, OK, um, by using one of the BlazeMeter recorders. So this is just a second. Yeah. OK, now we're OK. Um, so this is. This is JMeter again. So as you can see, I created the test, and I will show you how you can create the test by using one of the BlazeMeter recorders. So I named the test demo one, two, three. And as you can see, I added some elements to the test, which can be very easily added. If you can just uh, need to right click, I can add, and then I can add thread groups, which eventually uh, you can call it like uh, groups of the scenario that you're looking to test. So for example, if you have a scenario that you would like to test a booking application, let's say, booking website, a travel agency booking website, and then you have some steps in your scenario, like make a reservation. First of all, let's say you can browse for flights, you can select one of the flights, then you can fill in your information, and then you can make the purchase. So you can definitely create this kind of scenario by using the, by using the, sorry, by using JMeter and by having like a thread group. And as you can see, this is the exact scenario that I created. As you can see, I created a thread group. So what is a thread group? Again, it's a group of threads, virtual users, concurrent users, simultaneous users. Um, they will go through a scenario that you specify. So for example, in this example, I have a thread group that called thread group. Um, number of threads, users. So I selected to have five users. I can add 10 users, 20 users. But know that since I'm using just my laptop, I have limited resources. So if I will, for example, if I will put, if I will fill in, let's say, 5,000, then my, my computer will eventually will crash. So let's keep it on five. 
Uh, you can see that I can select the ramp up period in seconds. So it eventually ramp up the time that you take all the users to scale from zero to the maximum load, which is five mm -hmm. users in this example. Um, so let's say that we would, would like to have those users in, in 10 seconds. And I can have a loop. For example, it means iterations. How many times you can run the test case during the duration of the test? OK, so let's let's do only one loop count. And let, let me show you what exactly I'll be testing. So as you can see, I have three steps in my scenario. Um, the first one called reservation. The second one is the purchase. And the last page is confirmation. So I would like to show you what are those exact pages. So let me just go to a website, which called blazedemo.com. And I will show you how you can record the script by using one of the tools that we have. And then we will open the script in JVeter. So this is a website that BlazeMeter created just to simulate uh, a simple travel agency booking system. Um, you can play with it. And I will use a recorder that BlazeMeter uh, contributed to the open source community. And the name of this recorder is uh, the BlazeMeter Chrome extension. So you can use this extension. Again, it's a free resource. You can use it so you can record the sessions. It will capture all the HTTP and HTTPS requests that are sent to the servers. And BlazeMeter, this recorder, will eventually convert those requests to a JMeter script. So I just named the recording. Now we can hit record. And now let's create the user journey. So let's say that I'm a user who want to purchase a flight ticket from Boston to, let's say, Berlin. I can find flights. As you can see, we captured only, we already captured one request. Um, let's select one of the flights. So let's say the Lufthansa one. Perfect. Second request was captured. Now let me just fill in my details. Be shy. Address. Um, let's say that they live in the Fifth Avenue, New York, uh, credit card number. OK. And I can just put my name on the card, and I can make the purchase. So this was the third step. As you can see, this is the confirmation page. So now I can go to the recorder, and I can hit stop. So it can be like three step scenario. It can be five steps or 20 steps. It doesn't matter. Eventually. The BlazeMeter recorder will capture all the HTTP and HTTP requests and convert those requests to a JMeter script. So now I can just hit stop, and I can even show you what are the requests that were captured by the recorder. You can see that I had post requests um, for the BlazeMeter reservation page. You can see the body parameters, for example. You can see that uh, the port, the front port is Boston, the two port, the destination is Berlin. Um, you can see even the headers. Same for the uh, for the purchase page. Okay, if I go to the body, you will see the exact uh, airline uh, name, flight ticket. Again, uh, the departure port, the mm -hmm. price, etc. So you can have all of that. So now that I have my script, I can just export it to JMeter. Perfect. Now I have my script in my downloads. I can go back to JMeter. Just a second. Let me open my JMeter environment. Cool. And let me just drag and drop the files. So I, can go, I can go to files, open. I can go to my downloads. Here is the file. Yeah. Boom. This is the test plan. As you can see, BlazeMeter automatically added uh, like some elements like cookie manager, um, even between the thread groups, you would see the BlazeMeter added constant timer. So it means that we actually, the recorder, uh, recorded the time that would take me to go between the steps. So for example, in the test, we will emulate the same, we will simulate the same time, the same process. And of course, you can uh, you can control uh, the constant timer. You can play with it. You can modify it. And again, we have three steps in my scenario, in my thread group, which is eventually you know the scenario that I'm looking to test, the reservation page. I can see the two port, from port. You can see the exact um, body parameters like Berlin and Boston. Uh, if I will go to the purchase page, you can see the, the, the flight 
information and if i will go up to the confirmation page you will see the, my name the name of the card the visa etc so the, the blaze meter tool was able to capture all of those requests so now that i have my script let's say that i would like to run this test with jmeter i can go, just go to the, uh, the top of the tree and i can add listener so listener eventually is a component that enable you to track the results so let's add Two listeners so i can add aggregate uh, report as well as let's say that i would like to have if you result stream okay and let me just go go back to the thread groups we mentioned that we would like to have let's let's do one no eight simultaneous users uh ramp up period let's set it to five seconds and let's do only for one one iteration now I can save the test. And then I can hit the play button. So let me show you what happened. As you can see, BlazeMeter, sorry, JMeter is generating the load by using my own infrastructure, which is eventually uh, my own resources, which are my laptop. And then you can see that BlazeMeter generated multiple requests in each one of the pages. Sorry, JMeter. Uh, if I will go to each one of the each one of the requests, you will see. I think I received a response message, OK, response code 200, and I have some data, which, which I can see, of course, in the aggregate report. So you can see the labels that I have in my scenario. I have eight steps, sorry, eight samples in each one of the pages. Um, you can see the average response time, the 90% response time, etc. So now, so now we have all the three steps that we have in our scenario, which is cool, OK, right? So you can use your own laptop to test an application, uh, to test a website, you can definitely take, you know, you can play with it. And then once you, you know, once you're familiar with JMeter, JMeter is a great tool, but JMeter has its limitations, okay? And this is where BlazeMeter kicks in. BlazeMeter is a cloud environment, is the, is the next generation cloud environment to run your open source scripts. So of course, we support JMeter, which is the most popular and common open source tool for performance testing. But besides that, we support also Gatling, Grindr, Locust, PBench, Selenium, and many, many more. Eventually, you can test 20 different, <clears throat> sorry, open source tools with BlazeMeter. Um, but let's let's focus on JMeter. So again, BlazeMeter has the ability to expand far beyond JMeter limitation because again. JMeter is a great tool, but JMeter has its limitations. So when I joined the company, I think it was one, one and a half years, years ago, I think that my second question was, I always heard JMeter and JMeter and JMeter. So I asked my manager, okay, I need to understand. So what is the actual difference between BlazeMeter and JMeter? Because we were saying so many times JMeter, I just want to understand. So what is the actual difference between the, the tools? So there are multiple things that differ BlazeMeter from JMeter. So let's talk about, first of all, we talked about that the, the, the BlazeMeter tool supports not just JMeter, so you can run multiple open source tools with uh, uh, with BlazeMeter, but let's focus on you know, the most interesting stuff, which is eventually scalability and distribution. Uh, while you're limited to, to few hundred users uh, with JMeter, so with JMeter, you can use your own laptop, for example, your own PC uh, to generate let's say up to a few hundred users, base case, if you're running you know, a very light script. Um, with BlazeMeter, you can test up to 5 million concurrent users. You can run multiple scenarios simultaneously. You're not limited to one scenario at a time. And you can actually run the load. You can distribute the load from multiple geolocations. So if you go back, for example, to the, uh, for the example that they gave you, um, and if you recall, we talked about, for example, uh, our Amazon website, if we said that we have a Black Friday event. And now that you know that your end users are located uh, you know, in multiple cities in US, in Europe, even in Asia, so you won't be able to generate and simulate that exact scenario with JMeter because you're using your own infrastructure. You're, you're testing, um, you're using your own, let's call it data center to, to run the application, to test the application. So with BlazeMeter, you can actually use each one of the 56 different cloud locations that we have. So we have 56 different cloud locations across the globe. 
and we work with the three biggest vendors, which are of course AWS, Google, and Microsoft Azure. So in this in the example that I gave you with BlazeMeter, you can you can run the load, you can distribute the load simultaneously from multiple geolocations in the US, in Europe, and in Asia. And I will show you how you can definitely do that. Besides that, BlazeMeter has integrations uh, with, the, with CI and CD tools and APM tools. So if you're, if you're looking um, to shift left eventually, which means that you can um, start testing your application during the development cycle, <clears throat> sorry, with BlazeMeter plugins for the CI and CD tools, the most leading CI and CD tools like Jenkins, Bamboo, Travis, Team City, and Circle CI. You can just implement and integrate actually BlazeMeter into your automation process. So every time that you deploy a version, every time that you push a code, you can run a test and you can make sure um, that this change uh, didn't actually affect um, the overall performance of your application. So you can definitely do that. So with the those with this integration to the CI and CD tool, you can even schedule tests. You can run remote tests. So for example, you can set a time that every night at 12, 12, 12 a.m., let's say, uh, you will run a test of one hour and you will select X scenario, or Y scenario. You can definitely do that uh, from your CI and CD tool. Um, in addition, we have integrations with the, we have integrations with the, we have integration with APM tools. APM stands for Application Performance Monitoring Tools. Uh, those tools eventually monitor the backend side of your application, the, your backend side. Um, and we, of course, we have, we've developed a plugin for the most leading uh, APM tools, the most popular tools, which are CA APM tools, uh, New Relic, Dynatrace, AppDynamics, and Amazon CloudWatch, which means that BlazeMeter can actually pull the data from the APM tool and present, you can, so you can have both the performance metrics mm -hmm. and the backend metrics in one report. Okay, and I will share with that. Besides that, we have the best reporting best reporting tool in the market. So if you do, if you recall, let me just show that very quickly. This is, just remember that this is how a JMeter report looks like. And you will see the difference when I will show you the BlazeMeter reporting tool. So BlazeMeter has the best reporting, reporting tool in the market. It's a real-time reporting tool, which means that you can actually um, monitor the performance of your application during the test. Uh, you can collaborate. Uh, and share interactive test results and graphs with your teammates uh, or even with your higher management or with the client by just sharing an executive summary. And I will show you that. And you know, last but not least, BlazeMeter is not uh, just an open source community because we are not an open source community. So you get a 24 seven support coverage and we have some awesome resources such as blog and knowledge base. So for example, in, in the BlazeMeter, in the BlazeMeter blog, you will be able um, to find hundreds, if not thousands, of articles which are related to performance testing and, and webinars um, and use cases and so we can, and success stories. So you can find, for example, how you can run how you can prepare your website to the Black Friday event, how you can continuously test your application. So we have a lot of articles, valuable articles uh, that we uh, that we upload to the blog, and we highly recommend that you will take a look at the blog so you can browse. Um, some of the directories, but let's go back. So again, this is why, by the way, so this is why companies, okay? This is why companies, all the different features that I just covered, this is why companies, as you can see on the screen, uh, such as Gap, NBC Universal, Adobe Atlassian, and many, many more use BlazeMeter. Because with BlazeMeter, I think that our unique selling proposition is that with BlazeMeter, you can run a very comprehensive and realistic test. So it can be as realistic as possible. And let me show you how you can run a test with BlazeMeter. So again, if, you're, if you remember, we said that the, this is the BlazeMeter tool, is a cloud environment to run your open source scripts. So in order to, have, in order to run a test with BlazeMeter, you need to have a test, you need to have a script that you would like to run and test. Uh, but you can, even, you can even run a test without having a script, and I will show you that. So very quickly, um, this is the BlazeMeter dashboard. They just log into my account. You can see on the left the recent test runs. So these are the tests that I recently ran. You can see the exact one was the, the, the time that were executed. Um, you can see on the right, you can see the recently updated the tests and the usage report in a specific time frame. Uh, from the upper menu, you can access each one of the tests. 
that I ran with blaze meter and with one click I can run the same test again. So this is all it takes to run a test to rerun the test with blaze meter. Oh, I selected not a good one, just a second. Yep, for example, I can just run rerun this test, launch the service, and then be good. Uh, I could also access, I can also access each one of the reports that were been generated with BlazeMeter with no problem whatsoever. Uh, from my account, I can invite as many, I can manage the account, so I can invite as many users as I want to the account. I can invite my colleagues, I can set account roles. For example, if I'm a manager, I can just invite my testers, and I can even create workspaces. So what does it mean? It means that with BlazeMeter, you can create different workspaces for different projects or for different teams or for different parts of the projects. So you can very easily create workspaces um, and have a full separation you know, between the clients, the projects, or uh, between the teams. So you can work in a much more efficient way and you eliminate the risk uh, you know, for a leak of information between one project to another. And you as a manager has, of course, full visibility to the workspaces. So you can access each one of the workspaces. You can monitor the, the workspaces uh, usage. You can view each one of the tests. You can run tests. You can you can do everything as a manager. Okay. Um, you could also see the usage report in a specific time frame. So let's say I'd like to see how many tests are running from March. 36 in total. So I can see the number of virtual user hours in total as well. 65k, um, which is cool. Billing information. So I can see the name of the plan, the maximum concurrent users that I can, that I can run for each one of my tests. Number of engines, load generators that I can use for each one of my tests, remaining credits, payment method, invoices, receipts, all can be found in the billing section. So let me show you how you can create a new test. Um, and this in this webinar, I will focus on the Jmeter test option. But know that Jmeter, that BlazeMeter has some advanced capabilities like Torus. So Torus is a framework that we developed, which is wrapped, it's like a wrapper which is wrapped around. Um, 20 different open source tools that you can actually run with BlazeMeter. Um, and I can show you how you can run a URL API test. Let me show you that very quickly. Um, so URL API test eventually is a test that you can run without writing a JMeter script. Okay? It's the day today. Okay, June. That's it. I just named the test. And now the second step would be uh, to to type in the URLs or API endpoints that I would like to hit with the load. So let's say that, that I want to hit the, the Blaze, uh, Blaze demo website, okay? And then I would like to, to so let's say I would like to hit it with the, the Blaze meter website. And I can edit as many as I want, okay? And can I have a get, po get or post or put or delete a methods? No problem whatsoever. Uh, know that this is an awesome feature for users that are not familiar with JMeter. So what we do in the background, we actually create a JMeter script for them, and then we run this JMeter script. But it's much better to use the JMeter test option because with JMeter, you can actually control the flow. You can run a much more realistic test. Uh, you can, for example, if you have authentication involved in your application, you can add an authentication manager in JMeter, but you won't be able to do that in the URL API test. So it means that, for example, with JMeter and BlazeMeter, you can upload, let's say, a CSV file with thousand, you know, list of thousands of users, thousand users that have their own. Each one of them is a unique user with his email address and password. And BlazeMeter will actually use those credentials in order to run the test. So you will have one thousand unique users that will go through the um, the scenario that you created. So here's the JMeter test option. I can just name the test. Perfect. And now the second step would be to upload my script. So I can just select the script that we created together. I can go to my downloads. I can select the demo JMX file. You can see that the BlazeMeter automatically detected that this is a JMeter script. Um, you can see all the types that you can upload uh, to this box. And again, any relevant file can be and should be uploaded to this box. So for example, again, if you have a CSV file with any external data, you can just upload the file to this box. And if you develop, let's say, a plugin for JMeter, so if you have, if you have a JAR file, you can upload this file as well to this box. 
So once you uploaded your scenarios, your files, um, you can just go and set the load. You can configure the load. As you can see by default, the maximum users that I can test with this test is 20 users, but I can play with it. So let's say that I want to run the test with 5,000 users. Again, I'm not limited to a few hundred users. As I'm limited with JMeter, I can even run the test with 20,000 users. Okay? And again, when I, when I say 20,000 users, it means 20,000 simultaneous users that will access the application on the same second. Okay, so we will have a constant load of 20,000 um, users that, are make, will, that will make requests to your service. Um, as for the duration of the test, you can play with it. You can run the test for up to one hour, two hours, three hours. And with BlazeMeter, you can actually run soak and endurance test as well, which means that you can run the test for up to 72 hours straight. So let's keep it on 20 minutes. As for the ramp up time, again, ramp up time, it's the time that you take to users, all the users, you know, eventually to the tool to scale from zero to the maximum load. So in this example, it's gonna be one minute. So it's gonna take us one minute from to scale from zero to the maximum concurrency, which is 20,000 users. So let's, let's change it to five minutes. As you can see in the first five minutes, it's ramp up time and then we will have the rest of the test, which is exactly 15 minutes. You will have a constant load of 20,000 users that will make, make requests to the service. Note that you can, of course, you can, the BlazeMeter tool can add the users linearly, or we can add those users gradually. So I can, I can select, for example, to have some ramp, ramp up steps, and I'm not limited. I can, for example, like to have 10 steps, so you can see that we will scale uh, and up to 20,000 users. As for the load generators, as mentioned, BlazeMeter has 56 different cloud locations across the globe that you can use for each one of your tests. So you can select one location or you can even select multiple locations, which means that eventually BlazeMeter will generate the load from the locations that you just selected. So let's say that I want, I'm a website and I know that my end users are located in California, in Mumbai, India, and in London. Okay, so let's select the California servers by using AWS servers, and I can add another server. It can be uh, Mumbai, as we said. I can add another one. It can be from, uh, from Tokyo, Japan, for example. And I can select multiple locations from multiple vendors. Your call, okay? And again, we have servers across all, all the globe. You can select each one of the locations. So we have servers, again, in US, Europe, Asia, Pacific, and South America. So you can select each one of the locations. So let's add, let's add the Sydney, Australia. Uh, you can, of course, divide the load equally between, uh, between the servers, you can, or you can play with it. So let's say that I want to have 40% uh, from North California, uh, only 10% from Mumbai, India, 25% from Tokyo, Japan, and the rest from uh, Sydney, Australia. Super easy, as you can see. You won't be able to do it with JMeter, while you will be able to do that with BlazeMeter. So we set, we selected the load generators. Now we can just go and set test failure criteria, which are eventually like benchmarks or SLAs or thresholds that you would like to keep an eye on them. So let's say that, for example, that if the response time, if the average response time is going to be greater than five seconds, then you consider you will consider uh, the test as a fail test, which means that you couldn't maintain the level that you asked to maintain. So BlazeMeter in this case will will flag the test automatically for you guys as a fail test. We can add, we can add, we can of course add as many KPIs as needed. So let's another let's add another one. For example, error percentage. So if the error percentage is going to be greater than I don't know four percent, then again. BlazeMeter will flag the test as a fail test, as a fail test. And know that we can actually stop the test if one of those thresholds was actually reached during the test. So if in this case, when I uh, selected this checkbox and when I check this checkbox, uh, it means that we, if the average response time is going to be greater than five seconds, BlazeMeter will automatically stop the test. So let's keep it that way. Uh, we talked about the integration with APM tools. Again, um, it means that we'll be, we will be able 
to pull the data from your APM tool, which monitor the backend side. And you can, so you can have both the performance metrics and the backend metrics in one place. So it will be, you know, it will be much easier to analyze what caused the bottleneck because eventually, you know, the performance testing tools like Blade Meter provide you with the performance metrics so you can understand when you reach the bottleneck. And with the APM tool, you, you will be able to answer the second question, which would be, of course, what caused the bottleneck? So it's a, it's a perfect combination. It's like French fries with, with ketchup. Okay. Another great feature that I would like to cover in this webinar is the network emulation feature. So if you're testing mobile devices, which of course you can with BlazeMeter, um, you can actually emulate the load from mobile networks. But even if you're not testing uh, mobile devices, if you're testing a website, but you know that your end users are going to use mobile devices to, to use your application, like tablets, for example, in the Amazon example, if you know that some of the users, part of the users will use their tablets uh, to purchase some items. So with BlazeMeter, you can actually emulate the load from mobile, from mobile networks. So it can be Wi-Fi, 3G, good, 4G, etc. So you will be able to simulate the, that exact scenario, which is an awesome feature. Um, before we show the reporting tool, again, just note that with BlazeMeter, you can test web applications, mobile applications, native, non-native, iOS, Android. Uh, and we have, uh, if you're looking to test mobile applications, let me just go back, let me just go over knowledge base. So BlazeMeter has a knowledge base, so we can find every piece of, inf of, of information which is related to the tool and its capabilities can be found in this knowledge base, which is guide.blazemeter.com. Let me just type in mobile. Let's say that I would like to see if BlazeMeter can actually test mobile applications. So you can see the second guide is how you can test mobile sites and app, apps. So it says that BlazeMeter provides the real-world mobile app performance testing irrespective of the mobile operation system like Android or OS, native, non-native, iOS, Android, hybrid, doesn't matter. And then you can very easily, you can of course, you can create your JWT script and then run the test with BlazeMeter. Or you can use the BlazeMeter proxy recorder. Okay, this is a proxy recorder that we have that can actually will enable you to record a browsing session in your mobile device and then export the JMX file, JMT script. So once you have the JMT script that you, you used, sorry, you, you exported from the, uh, from the tool, you can just upload the file exactly as we just did to the BlazeMeter tool and run the test. Perfect. So now I can just hit the play button and launch the service. Again, guys, if you have any questions, feel free to ask your question questions in the GoToWebinar control panel, and we will address, the, I will address those questions in a few minutes. So let me show you how a Blazing report looks like. Perfect. So again, this reporting tool is a real-time reporting tool, and this is, pro it is the, probably the best reporting tool in the market. And one of the reasons that actually that BlazeMeter was nominated and ranked as the number one continuous testing and performance testing tool by Gartner. Uh, this actually, uh, this, uh, this article was recently you know, uh, released, it was on February, and CA and BlazeMeter was nominated as the number one continuous testing and performance testing tool. And one of the reasons that we have the best reporting tool in the market, besides the fact, of course, that we have all the enhanced capabilities and awesome capabilities, one of the uh, capabilities, of course, one of the capabilities is our reporting tool. Again, this is a, a real-time reporting tool, so you can monitor the performance of your application in real time. Um, let me show you this reporting tool. As you can see, this is the summary report. I can see that I had 20,000 concurrent users in this test. So this is a test that I ran in order to simulate a Black Friday scenario, which is eventually, you know, yeah, like a spike test or a stress test map, where you just stressed my application with large number of users. Uh, you can see that it was a 36 minutes test. It was a JMeter test. And I used the, the BlazeMeter service that which are in Google Iowa. You can see the start and the, the exact start and end time. And you have all the performance, the most important performance KPIs, which are maximum users, which is the load, uh, the throughput, which is hits per second. So in this test, uh, we were able to generate 682 hits per second. Okay, 
Uh, you can see the error percentage, which is not that good, and I will show you why. You can see the average response time, which is half a second, which is, you know, it's not that bad when running at 20,000 virtual users. If you have a response time of half a second, it's not that bad. Um, 90 percentile, the bandwidth, and here you have the response time and the, re the load graphs. Um, all the graphs are in Blazing Terrain Interactive, so you can zoom in, so you can see there is a bump here. I can just zoom in. I can zoom in in each one of the, each, each part that I would like to do that. I can just do that. But this, these are only the summary graphs. You get a much more detailed graph, which is the timeline report. So in the timeline report, as you can see, you have multiple KPIs that you can select or unselect very easily. So let's say that I would like to add the latency to the, to the report. Okay, and now I can just, you know, we can select multiple KPIs or I can select one of the pages that I have in one in my scenario. I don't want to have, you know, the data for all of them for just, let's say, just for the confirmation page. I can do that. And now I can zoom in. I can see what was the performance of my reservation confirmation page, sorry. And as you can see, you can slice and dice the report exactly as you want. Super easy. Now that I have the report, I can even change the granularity if I would like to do that to seconds. So you can have the metrics uh, per second. And you can download the graph as a PDF file or any other supported format. Super easy. Besides that, you get also the request statistics report, which is the raw data. So in those 36 minutes, BlazeMeter actually generated almost 1.5 million requests to the service. You can see the samples column. You can see the number of uh, requests that BlazeMeter generated, almost 1.5 million requests. Um, you can see the breakdown per page as well. You can see you know, almost half a million requests in each one of my pages that I have in my scenario, which is the exact scenario which we created together. I think it was like 20 minutes uh, ago. So you can see the exact scenario. And you have the, the, you know, the breakdown per page. So you can see what was the average response time of the page. Uh, the hits per second, the 90 percentile, the 95, 99, minimum and maximum response time, the bandwidth, the error percentage per page. You can even select the metrics that you'd like to see in this report, and you can download this, the data as a CSV file. So as you can see, I know in this error, in, sorry, in this report, I had 33 percent errors. Why is that? As I can see, in one of the pages, which is a confirmation page, I got something. I got 100 percent errors. So now I can just go to the error report, which is a very comprehensive error report. I can go to the confirmation page, and I can see what was the errors that, that I received from the servers. And I can see code 404, page not found, almost half a million times. Why is that? Because I actually damaged the URL on purpose. So I can see that I wrote confirmation with double N instead of only one N. And this is why the Blazing tool couldn't access this web, web page and, you know, run the test with it. So this is why we received 404 page on found, and eventually we got also service unavailable uh, code as well. So in the error report, again, you can see all the response code and description and the counter. I mean, how many times those errors occur during the test in each one of the in each one of the pages, labels, URLs that you have, or APIs that you have in your scenario. This is a super cool uh, uh, report. Um, if you recall. We set test failure criteria as well. So in, in this test, I, I set four different uh, SLAs, thresholds, benchmarks. And you can see that BlazeMeter actually flagged the test as a failed test. And why is that? As you can see, the error percentage, while I set the threshold to only 3%, the actual error percentage was much greater than that. So this is why BlazeMeter flagged the test automatically as a failed test. Um, note that you can download the service logs and the JTLs files, which are the JMeter artifacts. Once the test is completed, you can do that very easily. Um, if you would like to force, you can just download the JTLs files, which are the JMeter artifacts, and then you can open those files in JMeter if you would like to have some more information. If you recall, we said that you can even collaborate with your colleagues, with your peers. As, as you can see, I can share the report. I can just turn this sharing option on. And then I can share this shareable link with my colleagues, and each one of them will be, even if he's not a BlazeMage user, will be able uh, to view uh, the full report that I just showed you. 
In addition, if you would like to share this report with your higher management or with the customer, you can very easily download an executive summary. You can save it as a PDF file or you can just share the link. Um, and in this executive summary, you can change the name of the test. You can write a descriptive summary, conclusions, recommendations. Of course, you can upload your logo here, the company logo. No problem whatsoever. Um, and you get the high level data. As you can see, the throughput, the response time, the error rate, the top five slow responses, top five or five errors. Eventually, the most important performance KPIs. The graphs, again, everything that I just show you in the real time reporting, you also have uh, in an executive format in this executive summary. So, aggregate report, you can see the number of samples again, response time, error percentage, hits per second. L report for each one of the pages. Perfect. Another, another awesome feature that we have. So let's say that you ran some tests. Okay, you, you, you ran a test and then you, you saw that you have 33% errors. So you made a change in the code or in the backend side and then you ran some more tests. So of course you can compare the results manually or you can just use the Blaze Meter awesome comparison tool, which is out of the box. Eventually you can just do that. Um, you can just, let me just select, you can select up to five tests and then you can, BlazeMeter will actually compare the results of your application in those tests automatically. So you can select from the drop down tests, okay. Up to five tests and eventually we'll see the differences in the users, in the response time, in the latency, bandwidth, hits per second and error percentage. And again, I can just zoom in a specific time frame and I can download each one of the graphs as a PDF file or as any other supported format. Um, so this is the BlazeMeter. This was the BlazeMeter reporting tool. So I showed you how you can run the test with BlazeMeter. It's super easy. All you need to do is to upload the file from your Gemini script to the BlazeMeter tool to select, uh, to configure the load, which will eventually is to say, is to specify what would be the maximum load that you're looking to test. Uh, what is the duration of the test that we would like to run, uh, the ramp-up time, the locations. If you need failure criteria or network emulation, you can definitely do that. So if you recall, I mentioned that you, with BlazeMeter, you could also run multi-scenarios tests. So as you can see, BlazeMeter has a feature which is called the multi-test feature, which enables you to, for example, if I save the test, I can just go and select multiple tests. It can be the same tests, okay? It can be the same test with different configuration from different servers. For example, I can select Ohio and uh, London, and let's select a different one, um, Oregon, let's say. And I can select different different uh, concurrency for each one of my scenarios. And you could also run multiple scenarios simultaneously. So it can be different scenarios, different user journeys, different JMX files, and BlazeMeter will be able to generate, to trigger, to trigger all of those scenarios simultaneously and run them as one test, as a one multi-test. So you can have both uh, an aggregate report as well as report for each one of the scenarios that run simultaneously. So let, let me show you that very quickly. Mm -hmm. We just type in multi, and you can see that I have a multi-test. So this was a 9,468 virtual users, simultaneous users test. Uh, if I will go to the original test configuration, you would see that I had three scenarios involved in this uh, in this uh, test. And I can see the exact configuration of each one of the scenarios that I had in, in, this, uh, in, this, or in this test. And as you can see, BlazeMeter provides you with aggregate report. So this is the overall performance uh, of your application when you had a load from multiple locations and when you selected multiple scenarios, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. But still, you might say, okay, but if I would like to know if I run the test from, for example, from Mumbai and Google, sorry, from Oregon, how can I know what was the exact performance of my application in each one of the scenarios? I would like even to compare the results between the locations that I had. So as you can see on the bottom, on the left, you have three sessions, which are eventually three different scenarios that run simultaneously in this test. And now you have a very detailed report, full report for each one of the scenarios that you ran simultaneously. So you can see for the first location, second location, or so second scenario, or third scenario, eventually we provide you with all the tools, the features, everything that you need in order to run 
uh, very successful in realistic tests. So we have 10 minutes before we'll end this webinar. So I think that now it's a perfect time um, to ask to answer your questions. Mm -hmm. So again, um, please feel free to ask any questions that you may have. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, please ask any questions that you have in the in the go to webinar control panel. Let me ask uh, address the, those questions. Okay, let's see what we have here. Uh, if my JMX uses some plugins from Jmeter plugins uh, .org, do Blazemeter support by default? The answer is yes. Blazemeter is 100% compatible with Jmeter. So everything that can be done in Jmeter can be done in Blazemeter. So we support all the different plugins. Everything that you have in Jmeter is out of the box supported by Blazemeter. So again, it's the same capabilities, but but enhanced capabilities eventually. Okay. We have another question. If my JMX files contain CSV files for parameterization, how am I supposed to upload uh, in Blazemeter? Excellent question. So let me just go back to the uh, to the knowledge base, and I can type in CSV file. If you recall, I mentioned you can upload the CSV file alongside your JMT script and run the test. So let me show you exactly what needs to be done in order to do that. First of all, you need to have a CSV data set config element in your JMT script. And once you have it in your JMT script, you can very easily configure it, exactly as you can see uh, in, this, uh, in this guide. And then once you set the CSV data set config element in your JMT script, you can just upload the file. So you would need to you would need to of course you would you would need to set the path. So Blazemeter will able mm -hmm. to actually to access the CSV file and use the CSV file. And this is all it takes. You just need to set the path and to upload the CSV file to the Blazemeter tool. Boom! Now we have it. And note that you even you can even run multiple engines with a single CSV file, so you can split the data between the CSV between, between the servers if you would like to do that. Um, so again, you can definitely upload your CSV file alongside your JMT script. Next question. Are all the services of Blazemeter are free? So Blazemeter is uh, a commercial tool. Uh, we do have uh, a trial account, a trial version, which so you can up, you can sign up for a Blazemeter free account. We highly recommend that you will do that. And with the free account, you can run up to 10 tests, each one of them with up to 50 concurrent users. Uh, with the basic plan, you won't be able to run a multi scenarios or, or multi uh, locations tests, but you will, of course, you will be able to run your gem to script. But it, this is not a free tool, uh, we are a commercial tool. There is a question is, there, is it the same thing to record the test using a Selenium? Uh, or Blazemeter, eventually, you know, again, we are, Blazemeter supports 20 different open source tools. So once you have a Jmeter script or a Selenium script or a Gatling script or a, a, a Locust script, all you need to do is just to take the file and upload the file to the Blazemeter tool because we are 100% compatible with those tools. So if you have a Selenium script, you can just upload the script to the Blazemeter tool and run the test. No problem whatsoever. Um, can be can Blazemeter be integrated with Kubernetes, uh, Kafka, and any load testing specifically for uh, Kafka? So Blazemeter don't have out of the box, uh, you know, plugin for Kubernetes or Kafka, but we have a full API. So Blazemeter is a full API compatible. So everything that you can do from the you know from the graphical user interface, you can definitely do by using the uh, the API. So you can just go uh, to the Blazemeter knowledge base. Okay, if I will go to API, you can see how you can actually use each one of the uh, features that we have in the user interface. You can definitely, if you just need to write some code, it, it won't be that difficult, and then you will be able to uh, to integrate the Blazemeter tool with the desired tool. 
the do blaze meter offers some free users for hands-on purpose like uh, load runner gives 50 users for hands-on yes we do as mentioned uh with blaze meter you can run uh, some tests each one of the tests with up to 50 simultaneous users and all the features that we have in the report are of course uh are supported um can blaze meter be integrated with a monitoring tool so as mentioned yes no problem um blaze meter will support the client application if you're looking for a uh, true, true client application which of course like load runner scripts so blaze meter has um a converter that you can convert your true true client scripts uh to selenium and then run those scripts uh with the blaze meter you can just go to shift left one second shift left .com, and this is a converter that we have uh, so if you have if you're using load runner and you would like uh like most of the companies nowadays to sh you know to uh to shift from legacy solution tools to uh let's say let's call it that way yeah open source based tools so you can definitely convert your load runner scripts or soap ui um scripts to blaze meter by using this converter Uh, another question that, that we have uh hi under the failure criteria is it possible to shortlist specific transaction exceeding a particular sla uh, to be failed instead of a generic failure sla for all transactions so if you if you recall let me just go back to my application and if i'll go to the test failure criteria, you would see that you have all you know the leading or the most co common uh, performance KPIs, and you can select each one of them, so you can have you can better understand if you actually could maintain, or if you though if you actually applica application reach or haven't reached uh, this specific SLA. Do Blaze Meter support native app recording? As mentioned, yes. All you need to do is to use the Blaze Meter uh, proxy recorder. Again, I will just go to my knowledge, sorry, to my knowledge base. Blaze Meter proxy recorder for mobile and web. And again, you can record browsing session in your mobile applications. It can be iOS, Android, native, non-native, hybrid, your call. Um, let's see if we have another question. How, to, how do we edit a JMX file that I have recorded using Blaze Meter extension? Excellent question. So as we did, once you... Um, once you actually once you created the script you can just open and you exported the script from the from the tool on the recorder you can just then open the file in jmeter exactly as we did okay and then you can then you can modify the script so for example this was the script that we created so now i can play with it i can add as many steps as i want i can add I can add different elements in my thread groups i can add uh, multiple uh plugins for example I can add as many as I want. I can add the sessions. It's your call, and then you can just save the test. And once you have the finalized version, you can just upload um, the file to the Blaze Meter tool. Do Blaze Meter support CPU utilization or memory utilization report generation? Yes, again, you would need uh, an APM, to, uh, APM tool for that. Um, and if you would like, you can even monitor the Blaze Meter side uh, CPU memory utilization. If you can go to my reports, so this is a functional API test, just one second. You can see that we have an engine health report, so you can actually even monitor the CPU utilization or memory utilization of the blaze meter engines. Um, unfortunately, it's we, we, are, we, we are almost done with the one hour. So if you have any other questions, uh, you should expect an email from my colleague, Tomer. Um, he's a de sales development manager at blaze meter. Uh, it will reach out to you. And again, if you have any questions, you can, of course, uh, feel free to, to reach out to us. Um, by the way, again, at the end of the webinar today, there will be a very short survey that you will see. Please do, they, please do take just 30 seconds to answer it. It will allow us, really allow us to get your feedback about the webinar, and to, it will make sure that our webinar will be even better in the future. And again, it will also give you the opportunity, if you would like to, to request a one-on-one -on -one demo session to address your specific performance testing needs. 
guys, thank you very much. And by the way, if you would like to see, um, as mentioned, we have, just let me share with that, some great resources uh, that we have that we recently launched, like the Blaze Winter training site, which I showed you, the Jamter Academy, our knowledge base, our blog, uh, you can find white papers and recorded uh, past webinars in the Blazemeter resources page and some even case studies. Um, thank you all. I really enjoyed this session and I look forward to hearing from each one of you. Thank you very much.